Hey there, coaches. I'm Rich Prado, owner of Play In School and host of Travel Ball Talk, where I talk to travel ball coaches from the best organizations about the current and future state of travel baseball. Today's episode takes us to Boston, Massachusetts to feature a former first round draft pick and current YouTube star. Matt Antonelli founded Antonelli Baseball after his pro career ended and while he was coaching in college. While finishing college and starting his organization, he also found time to grow a huge YouTube following of around over 100,000 subscribers. This is a fun conversation. I hope you enjoy this episode of Travel Ball Talk. All right, we took a little break from Travel Ball Talk, a little summer vacation, if you will, but I'm finally back. So hopefully you guys finished up your summer schedule. We're recording this episode right here at the end of August, so a lot of you guys are heading back to school. Um, Today's episode of Travel Ball Talk is going to take us up to the Boston, Massachusetts area to talk to a former first rounder out of Wake Forest, a a YouTube sensation, and we'll talk about that. His name is Matt Antonelli, Antonelli Baseball, again, based out of the suburbs of of the Boston area. Matt, welcome to Travel Ball Talk. How you doing, man? I'm doing awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. So I've known about you for a long time because you're like YouTube famous. Um, <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we're going to get to that all that in a little bit. But um, if if folks don't know about that, they can they can Google you. I'm sure they'll uh, they'll find you. You're, I think you're also possibly a parent because that sounded like some kids in the background. Yeah, they're fighting. Good, good, good. That's... My wife's my wife's uh, wrestling them right now. Awesome, awesome, cool. No, we'll bring bring them on. We'll we'll have them <laughs> we'll have them on the follow up episode soon. <laughs> so before we get to the YouTube, before we get to Antonelli baseball, um, for those folks who don't already know you from your uh, from your YouTube channel, let's let's go back in time. I'll just pass the mic over to you, and and uh, you can kind of give us. You know your your bio, if you will, give us the back of the baseball card. Yeah, sure. So I grew up uh, just north of Boston, about twenty five minutes or so. Went to high school in Danvers, Massachusetts, at St. John's Prep. Um, ended up going to play baseball at Wake Forest. So graduated from the prep in '03. Uh, played at Wake Forest for three years, and uh, was lucky enough to get drafted in two thousand six by the Padres. And then I played uh, played eight years of pro ball. Um, again, got I was fortunate enough to make my major league debut in 2008, and uh, and then I kind of bounced around for eight years, played with five different organizations, and uh, my career came to an end in 2013. I was with the Indians in AAA, got released uh, during that season, and then uh, and then had to decide what to do with the rest of my life. And and you know, I, baseball's always been a huge part of it, and wanted to get into coaching. My dad's been a coach, uh, you know, he coached me and. Uh, coach pretty much my entire life and so uh, I got into college coaching while at the same time starting Antonelli baseball and then uh, two years after that decided to get out of college and go full-time into Antonelli baseball and uh, I've been doing that uh, ever since it's been about uh, we're going on I think six years right now so I want to go back I I did a little teeny bit of research and it looked like you went when when you were finishing playing you decided to go back to Wake as a as a grad assistant. Is that sure. that, that right? So you were finishing your degree while you were on staff uh, with Tom Walters, right? Right, exactly. So I had left after my junior year. I still had uh, – I actually had a little bit more than a year to finish. I was probably slacking a little too much academically while I was there. So I had to go back, uh, and I wanted to get into coaching. Um so I called up coach and I said, uh, you know, I'm, I'm interested in getting, coming back, get my degree. And I said, is there any way you'd have any room on staff for me to uh, get some coaching experience? I'd love to help. And, and he gave me the opportunity to come back as a student assistant. So I got to go to class every day and then do baseball after that. So it was the best of uh, both worlds. I was able to get my degree and, and get my foot kind of in the door and, and try to start to figure out, you know, what level of baseball I wanted to coach. So I'm grateful that he allowed me to do that. And uh, I learned a lot in that, in that first year at Wake Forest. Did you did you finish up on the degree while you were there? I did. So I uh, yeah, it was crazy. I had to do. I think when I was in school, I was doing like 
I think 12 hours of, uh, of classes a semester. And I, when I went back, I think I had to do like 21 hours one semester and then 18 the other. So it was, uh, yeah. it was, it was not very fun, but I got it done. And, uh, you know, one of the reasons I, I went to college is I, you know, I wanted to play baseball obviously, but I wanted my college degree. And so, um, I wanted to get back and get that done. And I, I figured if I put it off too long, you know, and, and start a family, I had kids, it'd probably be tougher. So I, I went, I went right back right away, finished it. And I'm um, happy I did that. What, now, what did you, what did you end up getting your degree in? Uh, communications, which, okay. I mean, I guess it helps me. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, all I do now is, uh, is talk and, and look into a, a, an iPhone. So, um, yeah, I guess it worked out well. I mean, when I was, when I was at Wake, I tell people I, I uh, majored in baseball, which I kind of did. Um, I put most of my attention towards that, but yeah, the communication degree definitely helps. Awesome. And if there happens to be a kid listening, you know, usually, usually to stay right on pace, you're going to want 15 credits per hour or 15 credits per semester. And that puts you yes. at 30 credits per year. And you're going to graduate usually with 120 credits will get you there. Now, if you're taking yep. 12 in the fall, yeah, and not good. 12 in the spring, you're going to be six credits behind. And hence, having to take a, a heavy, heavy load of 21 and 18. I, I never, thankfully, never had to take that many credits at one time. And plus, you were trying to coach at the same time. Yes. So were you, were you like running in and out of practices to get to classes and get to labs and, and whatever else that year? So it's, I, I basically did – I had a similar schedule, I guess, to when I was playing as far as I got all my classes done in the morning. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually our practices start at like 2.30ish, so I just would cram a little extra, maybe take an 8 a.m. class instead. And then I actually um, – I, I don't know the rules exactly, but I think I needed to take too many credits, and so I had to actually take online classes um, as well on top of my normal classes. So I would do those in the evening. So basically I'd go to class in the morning, I'd coach in the afternoon and early evening. Then I'd go home and take online classes at night. Unreal. All, yeah, all, all in an effort to get into coaching and get the degree, man. I got to, got to respect yeah. that. That's awesome. And so, so the, as the story goes, how many years were you at wake, um, as, as a coach with, um, uh, with Walters? Was it one? So I, I stayed one year and then um, and then I got an offer to come back home and be the hitting coach and do some recruiting at, at Holy Cross. So then I did that my second year of coaching. Nice with Coach Desenzo, one of my oh one, yeah, one of my faves. That that guy's an animal. He's the best. He 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 is definitely one of the best. Um, so but Antonelli Baseball, the organization, not not you, the human, was mm -hmm. started during your time at Wake Forest, correct? Yes, exactly. So what happened was we, when I, when I got released, um, we started up, we had tryouts like later that summer. And, uh, and I was, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to coach. I didn't know what level I wanted to coach. And my dad had been a travel ball coach for a long time and also a high school coach. And so basically we had tryouts. Um, we had, we ended up adding three teams and then you know, I, I left and went to Wake to, to go to school and to and to coach. And so my dad basically ran, uh, pretty much ran everything while I was gone. I mean, I did a lot of the administrative work um, from Winston Salem, but he did a lot. Of, he you know he did all the on field stuff as far as the winter workouts and and all that stuff. And then and then when I got back in the uh, in the summer, then I got back into coaching. So I coached our our older team. And, uh, and so, yeah, it was, uh, you know, luckily we had, uh, we had him to be able to really help out and, and keep things going while I was away. And then, you know, and that was one of the reasons why I didn't last super long in college is I really enjoyed the Antonio baseball part of it. I enjoyed working with the younger kids. And so, you know, after a year of Holy Cross, I just said, this is too much. I'm not around enough. And if I really want to, you know, if I want to make Antonio baseball, what I think it can be, then I've got to go full time with it. So that's when I got out of college coaching. Got it. And so for perspective, uh, we, you started up Antonelli baseball roughly 2011, I think it would have been, it would have been 2000. I started in the fall of 2013. Okay. Okay. All right. Had my timeline a little mixed up. All right. So, so that's awesome. So you, you shut it down over at Holy Cross to focus full time on Antonelli baseball and, yep. and what did the what did now that you had your full focus on it what did it look like in in that year 
what kind of what kind of so, age groups and how many teams were you looking at? Sure. So I think when I first when I got out of Holy Cross, I think we had four teams. Um, we had I think it was like a. 14, 15, 16, and 17 year old team. Um, and so when I went full time, we doubled the teams. We went to eight teams. So basically, we've kind of pretty much been at that stage for a while now. We've been basically 11U to 18U. Um, and we have, we've been pretty consistent with that. We've added more teams, but those have been the, the levels still. We haven't gone down to any younger than 11U yet. So um, basically, it was you know, allowing me to just be around the kids more, to be involved more with, with our practicing. Um, I mean, that's the biggest thing for me is, you know, the development, obviously the players and, and we do a lot of practice, especially in the winter. And, and when I was coaching college, I mean, there were a lot of rules that wouldn't allow me to be around the players, to be around, um, you know, our guys during practice, cause it'd be a, a recruiting violation for a lot of yeah. the year. And so it just made it really, really difficult. So being able to be around the guys and really be able to coach, which I, you know, that's the reason I got into it. I wanted to coach. So, um, yeah, I was just, I was able to do so much more. Um, so fast forward a little bit and you and I were trading some text messages and, and like I do with a lot of the guys, I, I try, I try to get some bullet points of things that are sort of top of mind and uh, some of the bullets you sent me, actually all the bullets you sent me, were all things that are kind of on my mind a lot right now. And sure. one, one of them is, I think it's been a, a running theme this year, is this concept of, uh, of, of the, the buzzword is development. But the, way, but the way you phrased it was development versus showcasing. So let, let's, sure. talk, let's talk about some of these bullet points for for a few minutes and talk talk when you hear development versus showcasing why you know what what about that is uh is is sticking in your mind sure so i mean i think when it comes to especially with the older kids and and it's becoming earlier and earlier like we have some players that are in eighth grade and they're already worrying about you know playing in college and showcasing and that is uh, you know i haven't been you know in so-called travel ball for a really long time. Again, it's only been about six years. Um, but for me, like, I think the number one thing is as a player, and this is again, why I started the program when I originally did it is because I wanted to help players get better. And I think that a lot of times players get so caught up in, you know, everything is about playing in college or everything is about playing at, um, whether it's college or professionally, it's just everyone looks so far forward. And I kind of want to bring players back to you know where their feet are right now. And the most important thing for me is to develop and, and enjoy playing, enjoy the process of where you're at. And I don't want guys to get so caught up in just thinking about the next step all the time. And I, I have, you know, we work with a lot of players. I coach in high school and we have a ton of players in our program that are looking to play in college and I just feel like sometimes players, you know, they don't enjoy where they're at and they're always looking to the next thing. And so, you know, I'm really big on when we when we built our program, showcasing and getting players seen and noticed by colleges is obviously a part of the process. But I don't think it has to be an all or nothing thing. I think that there needs to be more middle ground where there has to be more development and more practicing, right? And a lot of players, it's weird. A lot of players don't enjoy practicing anymore. They just want to play. And they're like, well, no one's watching me at practice. There's no college oh, coaches here. So why are we yes. doing it? Um, and so that's kind of one thing that we do battle with and, and talk to our players about. And I think over the years it's gotten better. And I think players that play with us understand that that's, you know, we're going to practice 30 plus times in the winter and we're going to practice in the summer and in the spring. And we're not just going, yeah, we're going to go on tournaments and we're going to travel around and we're going to try to showcase you and we're going to get you seen. But, um, you know, if you don't do the work and you don't have the skill set that is required to play there, then we can put you in front of coaches a thousand times. Yes. And it doesn't mean just because they see you more, they're going to like you. You have to have the ability and the skill set. And how do you get that? Well, you get it through practicing. You do get it through playing. You know, you get it by playing games also. Um, but it can't just be about the showcasing and the games. It has to be about practicing and understanding what you're good at, what you're not good at, and then how are we going to attack it, how are we going to get better at it. So, I, I have definitely seen a, a trend in the last several years where you're having parents and kids uh, more concerned about 
who's going to be there than what they're going to learn, right? So sure. just this week, I saw uh, some some guys I really respect. Um, they run a they run a tremendous ca- camp down in the in the south, and a kid had the audacity to to ask who was going to be there. And I'm just like, well, why does he not? He has the opportunity to to learn from some of the best coaches in the country. Why why is he so caught up in who's going to see me? Why not? What am I going to learn? How am I going to get better? You know, the reality is in 2019 and 2020, getting seen is easy. Yeah. It's <laughs> right. so easy. Why? Are, it's like we shouldn't eat. We're caught up in the wrong things because that's literally the easiest part of the of this process right now. I mean, there's a camp every single weekend that that I can point a kid to that's going to have 50 coaches plus. So getting scenes easy. And oh, by the way, you can you know pull your iPhone out, film a kid, and text it anywhere, anytime to anybody. And, and so getting seen is so easy. We got to get we got to get back to the mindset of how are we going to get better and what are we going to learn? Um cuz otherwise nobody's going to need to see you. Um God. absolutely. I I completely agree. Let's take a short break from this call to talk about my day job, video. In 2019, if you aren't leveraging film to market your guys, you are doing them a disservice. So where do I come in? Well, filming one guy on your iPhone and texting it to coaches or posting it to Twitter is easy. But filming 25, 50, 100, or 200 is really hard. And that's why you haven't done it already. That's why smart coaches partner with Play In School. We do all the work. We come to you. We can film 100 guys in the time it would take you to film just four or five. If you'd like to see every team we partner with, visit playinschool.com slash teams. Contact me today to discuss the details. Now, back to the call. A big phrase I like to use is be where your feet are, and I do think that that is important. It's let's try to be the best player at the level you're at right now, and we can blend that with uh, trying to become a player that you know college coaches are going to like. Um, but you have to... I believe that you have to show that you can have some success. And I understand that college coaches aren't going to call and say, you know, how did you do it at the JV level? How did you do at varsity this year? Right? Like it's, it's weird where high school, you know, a lot of players, I get questions a lot from players are like, do I even need to play high school anymore? Like mm. I, I might as well just play summer ball. And I just think, again, I coach high school and I think some of the most, the most coaching I do sometimes is in high school where we have players every single day for two to three months. And I yeah. see players develop so much. And, and the fact that people are saying, well, why play high school when colleges aren't going to come see us because we're playing, you know, they're playing their games. then. well, those people are missing the point. Yes, and, yes. Uh, and so I, you know, so I get back to talking about, and there's, I mean, I guess there's only so many ways you can say it, but I just always tell them, listen, you have to, it's about being good enough. It's about the skill set. And you only get that through practicing and playing and probably more practicing. But um, I do know also, you know, there's some people, everyone likes to live on like one side or the other. Like there's people out there that are like, you only should showcase. It's all about the games, right? There's parents. And there's some people like never play in a game, only practice, only the, yeah. like, I, I think it's both, you know, it's both. Like we don't have to be one thing or the other. Like we can, I think back again to when I was doing this and I played in a time when travel ball was very small. Like there was like seven teams in the state of Massachusetts, I think when I played wow. and it was, you know, it was just a different time period, but you know, I got so much out of my travel ball experience. And the reason I feel like it is because I do, I developed as a player. Like that's where I developed. That's where I had practices where I'd never, I never had practices like that before. And so I know firsthand what a good practice uh routine can do for you and then what playing against good competition and you know competing in games to actually not only perform well but try to win the game do what it takes you know as a player to help your team win like i think that's all really really important um and i just think that for whatever reason we've gone away from that but every anytime i'm talking to players and parents i make sure that we i start with that 
and I say, yes, we will get your son seen. And yes, we will, you know, play in a, in a, in a schedule and we'll make sure that we're paying attention to where we're going. But again, let's not forget about the development part. And we hit on what do we do in the winter, what we do in the summer, the coaching staff that we have. I mean, we put together coaches that I don't want coaches that just write a lineup, stick it on the board and say, you know, here we go, let's go. And then not do anything. Like I want our coaches to develop. It's the reason why we got the coaches that we got. Um, and we need to teach the game and, and get players better. Yeah. You, you know, the reality is, is that you can s- skip high school baseball and get to college. No problem. That's possible. It's doable. I, I mean, in, in this day and age, definitely doable. The problem is, it's like, do you want to do that? Because, right. be, because the, the thing about the high school season is that it's going to prepare you uh, for that that type of schedule. Now it's not as long as a college schedule, but the the idea of waking up at you know what what, what times a high school kid waking up at six thirty to eat breakfast sure. to to get to school to sit through you know your seven classes that day to then get out and get to practice get to the weight room or a game whatever you know whatever the case is that's a heck of a lot different schedule than. Uh, than a summer travel schedule where you sleep till noon on Friday, you get in mom's car and you drive over to the event and you lace them up and, and go and you play, you know, four games on a weekend with, with no homework and no, and no academic schedule and pressure. Um, because I hate to tell these kids that when you get to college, you actually got to go to class and, uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of an important deal. Um, so Yeah. Yeah, you could skip high school baseball, but I don't think you're going to be um, truly prepared for for what the college experience is going to bring you. It, you're going to get kicked in the teeth is is probably more like it when you realize you got to get to class yeah. and, and then and then you know and then do all the baseball responsibilities and then oh by the way you got to get up and do it again tomorrow um, when you're exhausted. I agree. When and you and you got to I mean the thing that I said is like you've got to compete and sometimes you know when you and when when I watch summer ball sometimes and again we want our players to to not be like this but I we play enough games and against enough teams where sometimes it's just like you know everyone goes out there they're really worried about themselves they just want to showcase games over who cares who won or lost okay did I do well who is watching me let's go home and it's like you got to when you step on campus to make a college team like you know, it's, it's, it's serious business and coaches aren't just, you know, they're competing to win. They want to win and you players are going to help them win. And if you haven't really competed and you haven't been pushed and it's just a different atmosphere, like high school, if you haven't been a part of that, and I know every high school is different, but like our high school where I coach, like we're every year, um, we're competing to win a state championship. And we've, unfortunately we've lost in three state championship games in the last four years. Um, but like, what players get out of that as far as competing, learning how to win, learning how to get better. Uh, But then also just having fun. Like my best memories are from are really from like the time when baseball was about like being with your buddies and freaking competing to win the game. And it's not just baseball. It was like football and hockey. Like those are the things when I have memories of, of playing like those are the things I, I think about football and hockey where I didn't even care about playing at the next level. I had no interest in playing college hockey or college football my junior and senior year, but I loved playing because I was competing to win the game and to, you know, and I was doing it with my buddies and my friends. So I think that's a, that's a part of it too, that some people just forget. Yep. Competing for, for your conference title or regional championship or a state title is a lot different than going out with a travel team to a uh, to a showcase where the the scoreboard's not even on, right? Mm-hmm. It's a it's just a different atmosphere. It's a different it's a different level. There's a different gear getting engaged, um, and and you're gonna need that. You're gonna need that gear. You're gonna need, need to know what that feels like, because, I mean, the harsh reality is the these college coaches their jobs on the line. Every single sure. time they step they step on the field, it's they need to win. They don't if they don't do enough winning, they're going to be looking for another job. And so it, you know, yeah, it's a lot of fun. But for those guys, it's their job and it's serious. And they're going to put the best nine guys on the field. And uh, it's going to be guys that they think and feel that can compete for for victories. Um, let's um, 
we we could we can go on on that all day. I think. But I want <laughs> I want to ask you one of the one of the bullets you sent me. That's uh, that's that's sort of a a, a little bit of a a hot spot for me. Is is this this idea about rankings? Talk to me. Yep. Talk to me about ranking. When you when you hear the word rankings, what goes through your head? What do you think and feel? Well, I think it goes back again to players and families not really understanding what it's you know for me what it's really about. I just I get like you know I get eleven and twelve year old players that are asking me and, and parents you know how do we get on? How do we get them ranked? How do we get them on like this website or that website? And I'm just like what are we talking about? Like where rankings for me and, and, and listen, there are certain websites where I agree. Like if you're ranked on certain websites and you're an older player, you're a high school guy. Like, yeah, I mean, that could mean something and could it help you? Yeah. But like, let's not go overboard with this stuff. And uh, you know, every day I see a new service ranking players and yeah. it's going down to these young, young players where like, it's it's just again focused on the wrong things. Like, and I I hate going back to when I was younger, but it's like I didn't have any, you know. And it, it's not like I'm super old. I'm only 34, but it was just a different. There was no social media. There weren't really there weren't rankings or any of that stuff. And I just felt feel like you know I was focused on things that actually mattered, like getting myself better having fun again the things we already talked about and rankings just never ever crossed my mind and i don't understand why for young players and families they're so concerned about it and i get asked about it all the time so it, i don't know it just it's a it, it just makes me upset so when we were in school i'm a little older than you when i was in school there used to be a a uh, publishing company and they'd they'd put out a, a book called who's who among american high school students I actually just pulled this up on the internet. So it's, it's called Who's Who, and and here's 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 how it worked. They would send out an advertisement to the school or to the parents and say, uh, "Little Johnny uh, is ranked in the Who's Who of American high school students." If you'd like to know uh, where Little Johnny is ranked, you can buy the book here. <laughs> so if you if you if you if you Google this who's who and you pull up the Wikipedia page, the second bullet point says criticism. It says there was much debate over the value of the book. Although it does not cost any money to be listed, it is often categorized as a scam since it's an attempt by a private company to make money through proud parents and students who purchase the book. Does that remind you of anything? I mean, th this this is an this is an exact equal comparison to what's going on with these ranking companies in no uncertain terms. We're gonna you come come to a workout. We're gonna rank you, mom and dad. If you want to see the ranking and the scouting report, it's gonna be ten bucks a month to see your right. kid. So I mean that that's just me. The thing is, it. I think I think these rankings are hurt, are helping a small portion of the kids who get ranked, but I mm -hmm. think it I think for most kids it doesn't do a whole lot because if you're ranked very very high, doesn't everybody already know that you're a pretty good player? <laughs> right. And if you're not ranked very high, do you want to tell everybody that? Probably not. So so maybe there's some kids that are just out of the top 10 or whatever that that it, it can be helpful for but i mean that this this is a this is a kind of a pet peeve of mine i know it the whole thing makes a lot of moms and dads feel good they want to see it they want to see the fluffy scouting report that goes with it um but most most of the reports are pretty laughable um you know but uh, anyway so yeah rankings uh, take them with <laughs> take them with a take them with a grain of salt and um yeah, Google who's who among American high school students, and you'll get to see uh, what I just read. And and that that sentence I just read, to me, it kind of describes exactly what most of these ranking companies are. Um, so, oh, I gotta take a deep breath after that. I get, I get a little worked up. I don't know how much you can hear. By the way, I don't know how much you can hear my daughter, but she's like having a full conversation outside my oh, office door. That's so. hilarious. I, I heard good a little. Content. 
I heard a little squeal, but I uh, but I don't think I heard the full on conversation. She's just talking to herself right. at this point. Uh, it, it sounds like it. I, I think my wife is giving up talking to herself. That's hilarious. It's no problem. I got a, I got a three year old. He'll he'll go on he'll go on talking to himself oh, yeah. for hours. So it's pretty pretty awesome. Which actually, so this reminds me. I want to get back to uh, Antonelli baseball for a second. And you had mentioned earlier. It looks like on your website you go down as as young as eleven. You currently, but um, yeah. how many kids do you have? And you one of them's at, le- at least one of them's a girl. So do you do you have a boy? Yeah, so I have two kids. I have a a girl who's two, and my son will be five in two weeks. Okay, so here's my here's my prediction: is you will go below eleven U in the next <laughs> few years as that boy continues to age and progress with his skill set at whatever time you feel it's pertinent to to be around him, you know, and play the game more. That's that's when it might be at eight, it might be at ten. Um, but that's my prediction. You'll have an eight year old or a ten year old Antonelli baseball team here pretty soon and, and you'll coach that team and you <laughs> and you'll and you'll come up all the way with them. That'll be awesome. It's like the dream that come true. That will be right? really fun. I, I think you're right. We might have a, a T ball Antonelli baseball team starting up in two years. Yeah, two two years from now it's kind of a no brainer. <laughs> you'll either you will coach that team or your dad who coaches with yeah. you will, will coach that team and he'll he'll have grandpa coaching that team. That'll be um it, it'll be pretty amazing. Or both of y'all. <laughs> Or, it will be fun. Or both I, of you. For, and then, for sure. I'm looking forward to that. And that's a, and that's a different schedule than your older guys. And so you'll be able to do the uh, do the eight U stuff in the spring, and then come summer, jump right back in with your showcase guys. Absolutely, it's perfect. It's perfect. I'm done. This is done. It's 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 already in the works. You can go <laughs> ahead and start recruiting some of the kids at his uh, at his kindergarten class now. Uh, well, actually, we went to T. My wife yelled at me. We we're at T. Ball uh, in the spring, and I saw a couple of good uh, six-year-olds. <laughs> and uh, and I started talking, and she's like, "You cannot recruit six-year-old kids." I said, "Leave me alone. Just let me talk to their parents for a little bit." Wait, wait, wait. The coaches in the SEC do right, so why can't you? Wait, that's a good. That's, that's a good point. You've got oh, wait, not that. You got a scholarship offer. Yeah, so. not t- maybe not T. Ball. Maybe not that young. Uh, <laughs> So, all right. So we alluded to it at the beginning. I want to, I want to get into this a little bit. I'm a, um, you know, I've been, I've known you for a while because I've seen your videos on YouTube. So for those of you guys listening at home, you can pull up. It's, um, what is your YouTube channel? I, if you Google Antonelli baseball, it's going to take type you, in Antonelli baseball. It's going to yeah. take you straight to his YouTube channel. Um, Matt's got, 116,000 subscribers. His videos are getting, I mean, the last few weeks, I'm looking at it right now, most of them are getting at least 25,000 views. He's getting a bunch that are getting 100,000 views. Um, Matt is a bona fide YouTube star. It's incredible. So <laughs> everybody's on YouTube. We all know what it is. And, and, um, Tell us, tell us about you were taught before we hit record. You get kind of gave me the background. Tell us how in 2010 you jumped on YouTube for the first time and tell us about that. And then, and then catch us up on how this thing kind of caught, caught fire. Sure. So back in 2010, um, I was still playing. I knew that I was going to coach at some point. And I, I just always had a passion for coaching. My dad was coaching. I would help him out in the winter time uh, when I was home for my off season. And so, you know, I knew I wanted to coach and, you know, I literally, I think I actually read a Gary Vaynerchuk book. I think it was called like crush it or something like <laughs> that. And uh, that, that, that is the name of the book. It's black with, uh, with, with green type and uh, yes, I, I read that book while we were on vacation before our first baby was born and it, and it, it, it changed me too. That book was is terribly influential in my uh, in my life. It was it was awesome. Abs- absolutely. So I read that, and you know, one of the things he had said is basically, um, you know, give your stuff away. Like, if you want people to know about you, you should you know let people know. And YouTube is a great way to do it. And uh, and you know, he had said, you know, if you start to do that you can position yourself eventually as an expert in your field. And I was like, Oh, it all sounds pretty good. Um, you know, I, I want to get into coaching. So I started to make 
very infrequently. I didn't put a lot of videos up, but I would start to make some videos, some coaching videos, some instructional videos. And I also would do just kind of like personal, you know, stuff that I thought was funny. Um, and I did it literally just kind of joking around, but also with the whole crush it idea and Gary Vaynerchuk uh, mentality with that. And then, so that's how it kind of began. Um, you know, I get busy playing and, uh, you know, the videos don't go up as frequently as I want. Um, but I, I grew a decent following over, I'd say, probably the next uh, five, six years. I mean, I had like probably 10,000 followers or something, subscribers, which was, I guess, was pretty decent. Um, and then when we started Antonelli Baseball, I said, well, this could be a good way for me to, you know, continue to, to promote the brand and let people know kind of what we're doing. And so two years ago, I think it was April of like 2017, I said, um, you know, I read it somewhere, I saw a video um, that said basically, you know, if you want to really kind of catch fire on YouTube, they recommended doing a video a day. And I said, geez, that's a lot of work. But, mm -hmm. you know, I made this, I made this uh, thing where I said, you know, I'm going to go the next year and I'm going to put a, a video every single day. And I did that for a year and my subscribers went from like 10,000 to like 60 something thousand. I was like, wow, like this is unbelievable. Um, and so I've just kind of kept with it and it's helped grow Antonelli baseball. I mean, I get so many people that show up to tryouts or just show up to lessons or to our clinics and camps. And they literally only know me from YouTube and it's, it's, uh, it's really helped, you know, our business grow. Um, you know, now I go down, it's, it's very strange. You joked around with me being, uh, famous on YouTube or however you put it. Um, but it's funny now, like I went down to Georgia, uh, for a tournament last month and I walk in and it's so weird. People ask me for autographs and want to take pictures because they know me as the YouTube guy. And I'm just like, I tell everyone, I'm like, I am like when I was playing in the major leagues and I didn't play for a long time in the major leagues, but you know, I could go out to dinner, uh, like 10 feet away from Petco park after playing in a game and never once did anyone say, Hey, you like, you're the guy on the Padres never once. But now you know, I can go to any tournament and I get asked for a picture or an autograph every single place I go. It's the strangest thing. <laughs> that is um, so cool. But yeah, and, and I enjoy it too. Like I just, I have fun. You know, now I, I, I started making a lot more videos about kind of my career and just kind of insight to maybe some things that people aren't privileged to see. Um, and uh, and a lot of people like those. And, and, you know, we joked around earlier also, one of my, one of my uh, players on our, our team um, said, you know, coach, why don't you, uh, why don't you record yourself playing, uh, MLB the show and do like a road to the show thing. And I was like, well, what the hell is that? I didn't even know, like my son plays the game, but I don't play. And he was like, I'm telling you people will like it. So mm -hmm. I, I goofed around with it this week and they're, they're like my most popular videos. So I well, don't know. YouTube's a strange thing. And I, I just have fun with it. For, for, for those of you listening who also think that's a strange thing because I think that's a strange thing too this, this whole idea of watching somebody play video games it's probably one of the biggest um, niches on uh, on YouTube and through, there's other platforms where people stream their games um, uh, the, the, the platform called Twitch is is enormous where people are streaming games and and Folks, people, adults, kids are tuning in to watch other people play video games. And the whole thing is they're, the, the player is kind of talking during the game, and it's, uh, it's this whole thing. It's so fascinating. You, you've brought up a few things. Um, Gary V, as he's known, Gary Vaynerchuk, mm -hmm. is, you know, from, from – I, I don't talk about him in my, in my baseball world, so in my – you know, in all of my play in school – uh, social media. I'm not. I'm not really talking about Gary V or any of the other internet marketing type of folks, but he's definitely a guy who's on my radar. I can. I consume almost all his content. Uh, actually, it's almost impossible now because he's putting so much stuff, <laughs> stuff out. Um, but you kind of reminded me of when you when you flip the switch from putting them up uh, randomly to going daily. Uh, you know, there's there's some people who may recognize the name uh, Casey Neistat. He's a YouTuber. Uh, I don't know if you've yep. ever heard of him. Um, I have. Yeah. He, he was putting out these these pretty incredible videos. He had an HBO uh, show with his brothers, and he was he was putting some stuff on on YouTube, and it was sporadic, like you. And I was I was already into his stuff 
you know, several years ago. And then all of a sudden he made the decision to go daily. And now he's like, an, he's like, he he's known the world around. He's, he's, he's like famous beyond famous, um, from his daily vlog. Um, so pretty cool stuff. It's amazing what you can do when you put in the consistency of the time. You know what? It's like, it's like taking more reps, right? The more reps you can take, if you're taking reps every single day, uh, the better you're going to get, the quicker you're going to get, and hopefully the more people are going to see you. Um, this is this is wild stuff, this whole YouTube world, and I highly recommend it. I'll put the links on the show notes. of When I put this up, it'll be at um, playinschool.com slash Antonelli. I'll make sure I have all your uh, your links included in the YouTube link. But um, do you have you found any kind of uh, any lessons learned from doing your YouTube channel uh, that you've applied in your in your kind of coaching in your baseball world? That is a really good question. Actually, I think and this uh, I've kind of learned, you know, when you're when you put yourself out there. And this is uh, this has helped me in a lot of different aspects. Um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people like what I put up, but a lot of people actually don't like what I put up. Um, and people are pretty will be pretty mean on uh, on social media. And so, you know, one of the things for me, and I wish I, I literally wish I had more of this as a player, but I think this also helps, you know, in business and and running our program is that, you know, as a player, sometimes people say things about you, you know, like I didn't do well with that as a player. I wanted everyone to like me, you know, and uh, you know, people start yelling at me or when I was, when I was struggling, people, you know, yelling, Oh, nice average 170. You know, that would like affect me as a player and having YouTube, it's really strange, but putting myself out there and, uh, and letting people give me feedback and uh, it's not always the best. Like that kind of just builds up this thing where all of a sudden now, like, I really don't care. Like you can, you can say I'm an idiot. I'm I'm the worst at whatever I'm doing. And I can just kind of like let it bounce off me and stay focused and like, keep, just keep going, you know, full steam ahead. And, uh, and that's really helped me like with the baseball part of things. Cause I used to take things like really personally and, you know, I would feel really bad if someone was upset at me about something. Like I would think about that for like days and it really would bother me. And now I've just gotten better at just being able to kind of like brush it off and not let it affect me. And uh, I don't know if that's a skill maybe that everyone needs, but for me, it definitely helped me because I was, I was not like that. I wish I had that more as, as a player. I think it would have helped me um, kind of stick with it a little bit longer, maybe not be on like the roller coaster of ups and downs of emotions as you're playing. it, this is this is one of the uh, the drawbacks of having a big following, you know, a hundred plus thousand subscribers, and you're getting, you know, twenty five thousand views. the The side effect of that is, um, people are commenting and replying. Um, you know, I'm looking at one of your recent videos where there's a reply or, or there's a comment on here. The comment from some rando has 12 replies on it. That's insanity. Oh yeah. Right? So there's People com- get really fired up. There's conversation going on in here and unfortunately the the comment section of social media is where the weirdos come out. It's where the haters oh, yeah. come out. It's 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 uh it's it's such a it's such a weird place. It's a negative place. Do you get in there and interact? Do you, are you reading these comments and and replying because if you if you're still a Gary V guy, then then I would assume you're getting in there and and having conversations. Are you doing that or yep. do you ignore it? No, so I do that as much as I can. Now I don't know how Gary V. He says he you know can answer every single email, and I don't know how he does all that stuff. But I try to do that as much as I can. Like if you look at my more recent videos, um, and I'm like way behind, but I'll get in there and I'll at least give the little uh, like to a co- to pretty much every comment uh, unless it's really mean. And then, uh, and I'll try to comment back and have a conversation um, or at least let people know that I'm listening and that I'm, you know, yeah. one thing that people have been commenting a lot of my videos are like, wow, you, I suggested this and you actually listened and, and added it to the next video. And so, um, you know, I do like to do that and I like to be able to get, you know, cause I don't really even know what I still don't know what I'm doing. I've put up lots of videos and I'm still just kind of going with the flow and, uh, 
And so I'm trying to learn also. So I think it's important that people are spending their time to watch me. Um, you know, the least I can do is, is listen, at least have my air open. And sometimes that means I got to listen to some stuff that maybe I don't like that people are, you know, like you said, people can be a little bit mean and crazy in there, but, um, there's a, there's probably a lot more good than there is bad. Just sometimes the bad sticks out because it, you know, pisses you off a little well, bit. Well, well, that that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Now, do you are you you're continuing to do daily? I'm still going daily. So what I do, um, I I typically will record either early in the morning when my kids are asleep, or then late at night when we put them to bed, and I'll record like a bunch of videos, ah, and then that. I'll I'll uh, sit down and I'll I'll schedule out the days. Yeah. Um, so that basically I don't have to be recording every yes, day, yes. Um, you know, especially during the season. I have so much stuff going on during the year with baseball. It, it, sometimes it's hard, but, um, you know, like anything. And this is, again, like I think a lot of the skills I had from baseball translate well to really anything. And one of the things is, you know, sometimes you don't want to do something like yeah. you know, there's plenty of times where I was in spring training and uh, like my body was killing me and I had to get up at 5 a.m. to go get treatment. And like, yeah, I, I want to go back to bed. I don't really feel like doing that, but I have to get up and do it because it's part of my job and it, it's what I need to do to get better. And like a lot in YouTube is like that in some ways. Like I'm like, oh, I don't I really don't feel like having to get up and do a video, but I set my alarm yeah. for six and I'll get up and I'll film because that's I just tell myself that's what I got to do if that's what I'm, if that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And, and there's two words that come to mind. It's consistency and it's also persistence, which, which golly, the, those two words, if that could describe a ball player, then you're probably a pretty good ball player. You know what I mean? If, pe- if people are calling you consistent and persistent, um, that's a, that's a great thing. Little quick lesson for any coaches out there. If you find that you have things that are repetitive tasks um, that you're doing every single day, see if you can batch your work, right? Like, like, like Matt's doing, you, you can turn the camera on, you can film, um, five videos at once and then do all your editing at once. And then for the next five days, you're good to go. The, mm-hmm. the alternative would to be fill film one video and edit it every day in a row for five days. And that's, that's much less efficient so if you you coaches out there, you got to think about things in your life that you can batch so that you can create more efficiencies, which are going to free you up um, to to have a little more time, you know. And every every minute you can get back to your life is a is a is a minute you can you can get back to your family. Another minute you can sleep. Another minute you can uh, do personal development or education. Um, that, and that stuff matters. I, I, I try to do the same thing with my, uh, with these podcasts is, is I try to get, uh, two or three of them, um, scheduled on the same day for interviews. Um, you know, these are a little longer, so it's not like I can do five of them in a day, but, um, right. but you know, I'm, tr- I'm trying to do that as much as possible. Or if there's a week where I can knock out, uh, two days of doing two of them, I got four of them. Guess what? That's a full month of, of episodes and it only took me two days to do. Um, so, so yeah, man, that's, um, that's, that's good stuff. Good lessons learned. Hey, let's finish with this. We've, we talked about some, some of these kind of things that are top of mind for you that are, that are showcase and travel baseball related, but I want to ask you, um, right now, you know, your experience in travel ball, do you see, do you see any opportunities? Usually I ask somebody for the good, the bad, and the ugly right? Travel ball wise, you know, the, the state of travel baseball. So maybe I'll just ask you just like that. What do you, what do you see currently the good, the bad, and the ugly, um, with travel ball? And when I say ugly, I, I just mean, you know, room for improvement or opportunities. So tell me things you see that you love and, and maybe some things you see that you wish you could, uh, improve upon. Sure. I think that, I think there's a lot of good things going on with, with travel baseball and baseball in general. Like I think that, um, you know, the, the whole development part, the side of things is you see it everywhere. Now you see, you know, and that's causing a lot of people to fight back and forth also. But, um, I think baseball players are in a really good position with, uh, where things are going. I do think that, um, you know, like anything, there's plenty of people that are trying to take advantage of that and and companies. And there's a lot of stuff out there that you need to be educated on. Um, but, um, I mean, I'm super excited to be involved with it. It's been something that I owe most of my success in baseball to travel baseball. And, uh, 
And I think it just gets back to literally just like the basics, right? It's like giving kids an opportunity to um, get good coaching, to, to be able to work hard, to be in an environment where they're going to be pushed and they're going to be, you know, competition and, uh, and where they can get better and improve. And hopefully, you know, for all the kids, like all of our kids, most of them, like they want to play, they want to play at a high level. They want to make their high school teams. They want to play college. And some of them say, Matt, I don't want to play in the big leagues. And, uh, and that's exactly what I was like as a kid. That's what I wanted to do. And to have somebody there that can, uh, and again, there's plenty of good people um, that do it. And so it's really about just educating yourself as a parent and as a player and finding a place that can do that and has, you know, the right intentions and, uh, and jumping on board and then going full steam ahead. And, you know, I don't know, there's so many things going on in travel ball. And like I said, there's, we listed a bunch of things that I think, you know, that I personally don't like. And I just think it's like, let's focus on the right stuff. And, um, you know, it's, e it's easier, I guess, for me because, um, you know, the things that I want to do are for me, what, what I think are important. And I'll probably never get into, you know, like if you see me start putting a rankings thing on my website, like come down and slap me on the head, please. <laughs> um, cause I'm, cause I'm, you know, I'm, I, I always say, and, and, you know, my dad has done it for a long time. We're like, we're in it for the right reasons. And, and, uh, you know, we're, we want to do it for the kids. And obviously it's a business. We have to make money or else there will be no more Antonelli baseball. Yeah. So we do have to balance that. But like, I never want to get into things that I think are more for me and not for, you know, for our players and for the organization. So I know that probably doesn't answer the question exactly, but um, I think, I just think sometimes travel ball gets like this bad rap just because there are certain things in it that some people don't like, but there's so many good things and so many good organizations and people that are like doing the right things. And I'm, you probably see it way more than me because you deal with a lot of these programs. Yeah. Um, but it's like, it's like, just, you got to do your work and find the, the, the good places. And it doesn't take, you know, you just talk to the, talk to whoever runs it. And I can, you know, I'm talking to guys like, you got to feel pretty quickly for, you know, are they, you know, they type of the, if I had a kid, which, you know, when my kid gets old enough, is that the type of kid, if Anthony baseball wasn't around, is that the type of program that I would want my son to play for? And for me, it doesn't seem that difficult if you start to kind of know what to look for. And some of the, you know, some of the key points that we talked about earlier, um, you know, I think you should be good. So again, I don't know if that's the best answer for the question, but I'm excited for where it's going. I'm excited for what we're doing. And, uh, and I try not even to pay attention too much about what everyone else is doing. I'm just like, let's set it up. You know, me and my dad and our coaches set up and say, what do we got to do to get our players better to make them have, you know, let them have fun, get better, improve and uh, enjoy playing the enjoy playing the game. So, yeah, you, you know, that that brings up a really good point. One of the biggest mistakes I see some programs do is they're just copying what the other programmer is doing. And it, and it right. becomes this um, this blind leading the blind. And, for you know, for example, I'm going to set my schedule this way just because they set their schedule that way. Well, just because they set their schedule that way doesn't mean it's the right way to do it for your kids, right? right. It, it could be a completely different circumstance and situation. Um, uh, that's very cool. Well, I, you know, I've been meaning to ask you, and I wanted to interject, is the team that you played for when you were um, in high school still around, the mm -hmm. travel team? So, so I played for a team called lightning baseball, which, uh, is not around anymore. Okay. Um, it was, that is one of the programs I really played for two programs. So that was my program, um, that I owe a lot of my, you know, success to. And then when I became 17, I got a call from a program that is still around it's called the Ohio Warhawks. Oh, yeah, um, of and it was kind of like, yeah, so they, uh, they, you know, they're out in Ohio and it's, kids from kind of all over i got yeah. a call from ron slusher who runs it and um you know he was like that was one of the best things that happened to me as well i got really lucky that kind of upped everything for me yeah. as far as playing with you know our team was you know i think my first year i think we ended up having like four first round picks on that team or something crazy it was just you know again as a player i was always looking to play against the best that was one of my dad's biggest things like he was always like if you want to be the best player you can be you got to you know you got to practice with the best and you got to play against the yeah. best and so like that's what we were looking for and so i got lucky i got a call from ron and and uh and he had me go out there and play and um and i learned a ton i was able that's where I, that's where wake forest saw me mm -hmm. and uh 
And then I went back my senior year, um, you know, again, which a lot of kids now, it's like once I, we talk to our players a lot, guys commit and then they're like, all right, I'm done. Like, I'm just going to relax in the summer and I'm going to go right into college and, you know, I'm going to be a starting shortstop. And I'm like, dude, like you, like you're, you don't know what you're get, about to get into. Mm-hmm. Like you have to be prepared. And so I went back my senior year and um, got to play good baseball again during the summer and, and went into the fall at Wake. Like I felt really prepared to make, make not only make the team, but become a starter and um you know i owe a lot of it a lot of my success again to both of those programs uh warhawks if you're listening call me gotta get you on the show um yeah call slush slush will uh i'm sure uh, he would be the best to talk to yeah you know that's that's a program that definitely has uh a long long rich tradition that believe it or not i've never had any interaction with it just you know by coincidence it's just never run across them. Um, so, yeah, I'll, yep. uh, I'll definitely reach out and drop your name when I call them. Uh, yes, do it. Um, very cool. Well, let me let me ask you one last question, then we'll, we'll wrap up. Um, if, if you're giving a piece of advice to a young coach who's looking to get into this thing, um, in, into the travel ball scene, what do, you, what do you tell them? What kind of advice do you give that guy? Well, I think that uh, – I think you have to, first off, you have to really, really love and have a passion for coaching. I think um, with most things, I think people, you know, see some of the teams and, and, you know, there's a new team popping up every day. And it's like, I think some people see it and say, Oh, I can get into that. And uh, you know, that looks like it's an easy job and I get to be around baseball, but there's a lot of challenges that come with it. And there's a lot of work. Like I, I, my, my wife's always yelling at me like, uh, okay, let's, let's put the work away and let's go do something. So I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, but if you really, really enjoy it and you love coaching, then there can be nothing better. Like I get to work, we have like 160 players, I think in our program Mm -hmm. and I get to work pretty much every day. Um, with these guys and helping them get better, being able to help influence their career and just be there. Again, I had, I had programs. I had my dad, I had a couple of coaches that really, really had a big impact on me and really, I I think helped me get to the point that I got to. And, um, you know, if you're somebody that, that you, that is fulfilling to you, then, then I think there's nothing better than getting into a travel ball program. Um, as long as you stay, you know, you're in it for the right reasons and um, and then you just stay true to those to those things. Uh, and again, I've only been doing it for six years, but I hope in 26 years that I that I'm talking and I sound the exact same way. And uh, and we're still helping kids get better and improve, um, you know, so with with any with any luck, somebody will be interviewing your boy and he'll he'll talk about <laughs> running Antonelli baseball with his dad, <laughs> dad and grandfather. That would be awesome. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Listen, that's a great spot to end it. I really appreciate you coming on. All the links to your stuff, your the YouTube channel, all your social media, and uh, and the Antonelli Baseball website will be uh, on the show notes, which will be over at uh, playinschool.com slash Antonelli. So, Matt, hang on a second. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll stop yep. the call, but don't go anywhere. All right. Thank you. I'm having so much fun bringing these shows to you each week. If you'd like to recommend a coach for the show, please don't hesitate to shoot me a note at rich at playinschool.com or DM me on Twitter at playinschool. Again, my name is Rich Prado. I'm the founder of Play in School. My goal is to continue to create products and services that add value to you, the travel ball coaches, your players, and their parents. Visit playinschool.com to see some of the ways we're doing that. Or better yet, let's set up a call. Until next time, thank you for listening to Travel Ball Talk.